to 996 the hell thank you for big deal brewing for sponsoring this big deal of a season preview oh wow i gotta first show an image from exactly a year ago today obviously not to the exact date but this is last year's season preview look at this line we got travis boyd number one center i mean things could change a lot in a year and today travis boyd clears waivers he'll stay with the coyotes he won't go down to the tucson roadrunners but that's just a reference point to how things quickly things can change and how things could look drastically different once you go in through the season but i mean i think this is one of the best offensive teams the coyotes have put together in probably over a decade uh, for sure since i've been covering the coyotes since 2016 we're going to keep the first line intact no reason not to looked good in australia good through the preseason i expect hayden to be there for the full season last year it took him about 30 games before you know they got tired of boyd boyd couldn't keep up with keller and schmaltz they try hayden and he fits like a glove and let's hope Hayden is the answer for this line. Let's not have another Travis Boyd situation where at the end of this season coming up, it's a totally new centerman between them. Now we got Zucker, Cooley, and Kerfoot as a second line. This was the second line for their last preseason game. Kerfoot taking over Gunther's spot on that second line wing position which I had Gunther in that second line wing position. But again, an underwhelming prospect tournament, underwhelming NHL preseason and camp. The coaching staff and management are going to try Gunther out for in the Tucson, on the Tucson team to start the season. Maybe he's there for 15, 20 games, then gets called back up. But uh, Gunther needs to figure out how his skill set works uh, in the pro leagues. And if he cannot get that shot going, he's got to try other areas on the ice to be worthwhile to have on the ice. Third line stays the same. Michelli, Bukestad, Kraus. It looked amazing in those Australia games. Didn't hear any problems throughout preseason. It was a great line and great secondary scoring line to the Keller line last season. And then unfortunately we traded Bukes at the trade deadline and McBain took a few games to get used to it. But he had success there as well. Fourth line will be Carcone, McBain, and Boyd. But we all know Andre Turney loves to go 11 forward, 7 defensemen. So don't be surprised if you see O'Brien and Boyd scratch some games. And then you have a fourth line of just Carcone and McBain. And then they'll rotate an extra winger, you know, every other shift. Sometimes Keller, maybe Michelli. Maybe Cooley, maybe Kerfoot, who's a versatile player who could play center and wing. I like Cooley with Kerfoot because it allows Kerfoot to take those really important face-offs, but still have Cooley on the ice. So let's say they're defending the lead, or it's a crucial defensive face-off the Coyotes need to take. You want Cooley out there, but you know maybe you don't trust him to win that face-off. At least he's got a line mate in Kerfoot who's experienced at the NHL level to take face-offs and just shelter Cooley from big pressure moments so that Cooley could still be on the ice and do his thing, but we could rely on Kerfoot to be defensively responsible and take those responsible duties. Kerfoot's a wonderful, versatile pl player to have on your team. Defensive side, you got Moser, Dumba, Valimaki, Dursey, a great top four. And then some depth, sturdy, grind-out defenseman Stetcher and Brown as your bottom pairing. Dermott is the extra guy. Like I said, if they go 11 forward, 7 defenseman, Dermott will dress as well with Stetcher and Brown. Brown I like for the penalty kill and fighting, but honestly I don't like him so much to rely on him for so many minutes in a game. So that's why I like the 11-7 D rotation because it allows Dermott to take on those responsible minutes five on five if Brown's not up to the task. Soderstrom did not make the team. He got sent down to the Tucson Roadrunners today as well, along with Sanford got sent down to a Roadrunner. So Roadrunners looking good up front and on the defensive side, but they lost Prosotov to waivers to the Colorado Avalanche. And I know I said last video, if Prosotov gets claimed, I know nothing about hockey. 
It still stands. I think Prozatov will be on the waiver wire very soon. The Avalanche picked him up because Franceau is still battling with an injury and he's not ready to start the season. Once Franceau is back and ready, they're going to roll Franceau and Gorgiev and then Prozatov gets sent back on waivers. And then we'll see if the Coyotes pick him up again. If Prozatov gets sent down on the waiver wire within 30 days, the Coyotes could put in a claim on the waiver wire. If no other team does, and it's only the Coyotes putting the claim in, they could automatically put Prozatov in Tucson without having him to go through the waiver wire again. So that's a little crinkle there. Probably will happen. The Avalanche are just looking for a short-term stopgap for Franco's injury. For our goalies, we have Vimelka and Ingram. Comfortable with both of them. I like Ingram better. He's got the backup role, but it's going to be more of a 1A, 1B type situation. It took the Coyotes like 25 games last season to finally give Ingram some, like a lot more starting games and start to rely on him better. They were so hesitant to start Ingram and they were overloading Vimelka to start the first quarter of the season. And then finally they said, hey, let's throw Ingram in there. And then Ingram started playing good, sometimes better than Vimelka. Two very different goalies. Vimelka moves around a lot. Very athletic, big body. Whereas Ingram, smaller, more sound, more compact in his movements, more pur purposeful. And uh, I, I like that style of goaltending more than just swimming around in the crease. My expectations. I really hope the Coyotes finish fifth in the division. I think it's achievable. I don't think it's out of this world expectation. Like half of the central division is teetering on rebuilding. Uh, I think they could make it above Chicago for sure. Nashville, St. Louis, they're sort of teetering. Winnipeg, yes, but only because on the ice and their coaching staff, I don't have faith in. But they just signed long-term deals to Shifley and Hellebuck. That could eject some hope for the Winnipeg Jets. And, you know, they had a really strong start to the season last year. It flamed out near the end, and then they lost in the first round. They had no chance. But, uh, you know, I think the Coyotes could do better than Nashville, St. Louis, and obviously Chicago. Average special teams last year, they're 24th on the power play, 27th on the penalty kill. I'm not asking for the moon here. Average special teams is being 16th in the league. You add so much talent in Cooley, Zucker, Dumba, Jersey on the power play, and then on the penalty kill, you got Kerfoot. You know, you bring back Bukestad. You know, I'm sure, you know, Moser, Valimaki, he could be good on the penalty kill as well. Maybe Dumba, not too sure, but you got Stetcher and Brown, maybe Dermott on the penalty kill. So they got a lot of talent that their special teams now should reflect that. And hopefully, they could use their special teams to start to win games and put games away. It's been so long since the Coyotes have had a power play where they're winning a game 2-1, maybe 3-1, and they could they get a crucial power play and they could put the game away, get like an insurance marker, but a lot of the times they just don't have that power play to be crucial enough to score that goal. But uh, this year they should, they have no more excuses. And uh, hopefully, you know, with Andre Turney and his special team staff, with all this talent, they should be making a lot of noise uh, around the league. 15 road wins, uh, it doesn't sound like a lot, but last year they had seven, so please double it to at least 15 road wins. I had 20 up there, but it didn't really make sense because then I looked, okay, which teams last year had 20 wins on the road? And they're all playoff teams, maybe one like Nashville, had 20 wins, but they didn't make the playoffs. So I'll keep it at 15. At least double your road win games. Uh, individual stats, I want to see Cooley score at least 20 goals. It'd be amazing if he scores more, and I think he'll score more than 20 goals after seeing what he did in preseason. He's got a lethal shot. He's very confident, very accurate shooting. Uh, we saw the dangle in that Australia game. He can do it. Keller, I want him to maintain a point-per-game pace. Schmaltz, I want him to be healthy in. 70 points, you cannot get 70 points unless you're healthy the whole season. This guy is always injured. He always misses like 20, 20 games plus almost every season. He needs to be healthy. But on the other hand, if he does get inevitably injured like he always does, you'll see Gunther get called up and take that sharp shooter finish type position that Schmaltz currently holds. 
And then finally, in January, the Coyotes promised us that they'll have an answer or an update on the arena site. At the end of this season, I want the arena site to be picked. In the summer, I want shovels in the ground and just stop this off ice nonsense. Just imagine what would happen if it's January, February, March, and then the Coyotes announced we picked their arena, there's no vote, we got the green light to put the shovels in the ground, the Coyotes are hanging around maybe fourth, fifth in their division, maybe five points south from a wild card. They get that news, inject that news into the veins. The players have new hope, new mojo, new morale, like, hey, we're in Arizona forever. They finally got their act together and have an arena site. And that could propel them to win some games in a row, feel good in the locker room, and catch that last wild card spot. I can see that happening. Obviously, it feels like a pipe dream talking about it. It probably won't happen that they make the playoffs, but just some good off-ice news uh, would be really good to have uh, added on to such a good on-ice team that we all expect to see uh, this upcoming season. So they start the season Friday against the New Jersey Devils. They're on an East Coast road trip. Not too long, maybe four or five games. I didn't check, but it seems like the Cowboys always start the season on the road on the East Coast. Uh, but they'll be home shortly. They don't have a 14-game long road trip or any of that. 20 games out of their first 24 on the road. Everything could be, you know, cooled and settled down in their schedule. And they just get to work. And maybe with all this talent Andre Turney finally has, he could put together a really fun and entertaining team to watch. And I'm pretty surprised how... A lot of the NHL media is speaking really good words about the Coyotes. It seems like something happened during this offseason where the goodwill the Coyotes have started to overtake the bad will or the negative press of the Coyotes. And everyone's pretty high on the Coyotes. I've seen a lot of season previews that they have high, not so high hopes, but they don't think they're going to be a tank team. They don't think they're going to be a bottom five team. And they think they could make a lot of noise and surprise a lot of people. And that's sort of in my line of thinking as well. Really got to applaud the management, coaching staff, and ownership. How they turned around this negative news cycle into a positive news cycle with the arena vote going no. Getting some good free agents in Zucker, Kerf Kerfoot, bringing back Bukestad, getting Dumba, Dursey, and then finally getting Cooley to leave college and inject some skill and youthfulness into this team. It's a recipe for success, and let's see what happens. That's it for me. Thanks for watching. If you like, receive, spread the word. And as always, thank you for your support.